Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you from the C-Dub studio on the expansive first floor of the Winners and Winners Sports and Entertainment Complex to bring you today's Shallow Six. All right, it's college. It's Saturday, everybody. It's time for the Shallow Six, and uh, we're excited. We're going to see if we can... We're going to see if we can get off our 500 schneid. We've done this. This will be the fourth week we've done this. We've gone three and three every week. So today is the day we turn a profit. All right. And of course, uh, don't forget to uh, let us know what you're playing. Uh, whatever, whatever you're on. Uh, let's, uh, I've come up, I've, uh, I've decided we're going to change it up again, just a little bit on the picks. So let us know what you're playing in the comment section. Give us your best five picks and uh, because I know a lot of you guys like to play heavier on some plays than others, and, and it is kind of a disadvantage. So everybody's going to have 10 units max to play, okay? So that's how that's going to work. You can still make five plays maximum, and you can spread around 10 units however you want to do it. You got one play you really like, you want to make one play for 10 units, knock yourself out. That'll be fine, all right? You got two five-unit plays, whatever it is. So uh, let us know what you're on. College football, tennis, whatever it is, you know, baseball, and... Uh, you can beat it, you can bet it, put it up there, you get it right, we'll give you the shout out, you get enough of them right, just like C-Dub, you will be our capper of the day. Just a word of warning, I think our all uh, I think all of our cappers of the day this week have been perfect, so uh, make sure you put your best plays up there, all right? And uh, of course, wouldn't be, wouldn't be, wouldn't be if, uh, <laughs> if you didn't check out our websites, uh, winnersandwiners.com, statsalt.com. Uh, Winners and Winners, just a great site for all of uh, your handicapping when you're going from sport to sport. Got all the college games there, all the NFL games, checking out the, the uh, baseball playoffs as well. Uh, of course, we got hockey. We got the NFL uh, NBA preseason. So whatever it is, uh, you can uh, bet we're writing about it over there at Winners and Winners Debt Cam. All right. Uh, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's take a look and see. Uh, why I hate Fridays so much, shall we? We have not been good on Fridays, guys. That is just, um, just awful. And another awful Friday. Just uh, you know, I thought we'd gone done well, like done poorly doing one and two and stuff. Uh, no, we wore the big, uh, we wore the bug, big college football sombrero tonight, man. We had the, uh, we had the Virginia Cavaliers. All of a sudden, the Miami defense looked like the Miami defense did last year. I don't know where the hell that unit came from, but uh, they did a nice job. I, uh, they were able to keep Virginia in check. Keep pressure on the quarterback. Virginia is not able to keep the quarterback clean for the most part. And, uh, yeah, field goals instead of touchdowns, and that pretty much doomed us right there. Uh, then we had the uh, uh, Colorado State, New Mexico State over. And uh, Colorado State, they, uh, they they could have won this game by 40 if they wanted to. Well, I mean, you know, obviously they wanted to, but they had a uh, uh, the infamous fumble out of the end zone, you know, from the, from the uh, as he's stretching to, to reach the ball out. Uh, to score, fumbles through the end zone for a safety. Uh, they had another uh, fumble in the red zone. Just, just a dreadful night. But they, you know, they're still uh, New Mexico is so awful that uh, you know Colorado State was still over able, able to cover. And uh, speaking of Colorado teams disappointing us, uh, they absolutely were uh, gobsmacked by that Oregon defense. You know what? I knew the Oregon defense was really good. I thought Colorado would be able to break through. Uh, for somewhere in the ne neighborhood of 14 to 17 points, the way the Oregon offense had been so far this year. They hadn't been very efficient. Uh, even though they had been moving the ball, I thought that'd probably be enough for us to sneak in under that 21. That was not the case. Um, no. So, 0-3 we go. And, of course, I don't do a baseball pick, but I have a, uh, the premium players a lot. Because I said I didn't do a premium play pick for baseball either. Because I, I said, you know, if anybody wants to know what I'm thinking, uh, let me, you know, just give me a heads up and I'll, and I'll tell you. So, um, of course, I answered a bunch of emails, and I, I said, you know, it was kind of a, I was kind of worried about Washington coming off a really emotional win. They had to travel further. I thought they'd be flat to start, but the thing that I kept coming back to that I was intrigued by was the fact uh, that uh, Annabelle Sanchez uh, struck out uh, nine batters in in five innings in his in his uh, first start here in the playoffs with a swing and miss rate of fourteen percent, which was uh, way higher than his ten percent. I'm like, you know, that's. I said, I expect regression. I think it was a, I thought, you know, honestly, I thought it was a one-off. I didn't think it was something he was going to be able to repeat, but it certainly did get my attention. I think, uh, I said, I think this game's about even. I think the pitchers are going to be equal in this game. So I'm going to take the value. I said, I have a small lean towards uh, the Washington Nationals getting six to five plus 120. Um, of course, of course, that's what hit. 
So, uh, <laughs> yep, we play baseball, and uh, we don't get home. We don't play it, and, uh, of course, uh, we lose all our college games. So, anyway, we go one and one on the premium side. We had the uh, we we had the uh, Colorado State to cover uh, four or five wherever that ended up at. They got there no problem, and we had the Virginia Miami over. So yeah, I want I like to make sure when I have a game cap wrong that I make at least two plays on it. So well done. So let's uh, let's go on to today's action, shall we? We got six games to get to. Let's get to them fast. Taking a look at. Uh, the Kent State Golden Flashes against the Akron Zips there at Akron. Uh, the Zips are kind of redefining what bad football is, uh, especially bad running the ball. They have averaged just 51 points, or excuse me, 51 yards per game rushing, and it, they are, have yet to average three yards per carry in any game. Uh, they do have a fair amount of passing yards, uh, which isn't surprising given how many times these guys are behind by double digits. Um, they've lost, uh, to the spread by an average of 14 points per game. In other words, take the spread, add 14 more points, you'd still be beating Akron's ass, all right? Uh, this is not a good match for a Kent State team that, uh, is awful against the run, but pretty good against the pass, 39th against the forward pass. Uh, give me the Kent State golden flashes minus the 14 points. And we're turning our attention to the ACC as uh, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets travel to Durham to take on the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, Yellow Jackets, uh, Duke's minus 17, by the way. Yellow Jackets having a very hard time on offense. We talked about this at the beginning of the season. They're trying to uh, they're trying to run a more pro-style offense with kids that were recruited to run the triple option. And it's, so far, it's going about like you think it would. Uh, they are averaging just a 4.5 yards per play. That is 113th in the uh, nation. The defense is a little bit better, but they're not good enough to make up for that dreadful offense. They still give up 5.9 yards per play. That is 86th in the country. This is a Duke squad that's going to look to run the ball down their throats, and those long, sustained drives for the Dukies, they're going to limit the chances for that anemic tech offense. Blue Devils, roll it up in this one. Give me Duke minus 17. And taking a look here in the state of Michigan, as uh, New Mexico State travels to take on the Central Michigan Chippewas. Chippewas minus 10-point favorite. Uh, bad things happen when you're 111th in the nation in scoring, putting up just 18.2 points per game, and when you're also 126th in the nation in defense, allowing 42.7 points per game. You know what? Bad things are going to happen, and bad things happen every week to this winless Aggies team. Now, the Chippewas aren't great, but... What they have done well is they have done well beating up on bad teams. They rolled over Akron, and they both rolled over Eastern Michigan. It is deja vu all over again as one of FBS's worst teams comes to town. Operation Fade the State of New Mexico continues successfully right here in this one. Give me Central Michigan. Give me the chips. Minus 10 points. And taking a look in the American Conference as the Cincinnati Bearcats Travel down to take on the Houston Cougars. Cincinnati, seven and a half point road favorites in this one. Uh, the Cougars, they have been reeling since uh, 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 De Eric King and Corbin uh, both decided to redshirt after the Cougars' one and three start. And now the story comes out this week uh, that head coach Dana Holgerson actually came up with the plan and approached different players trying to talk them into redshirting after the team had gotten off to that rotten start. Uh, this is a, that's a bad time for a team in turmoil with all that shit going on to face a Cincinnati team that is sky high after a huge victory over Central Florida last week. Uh, besides missing playmakers on offense, uh, the Cougars defense, well, they've been suspect all year and that's going to prove to be a problem versus a Cincinnati team that once again is going to look to run the ball and control the pace. Give me the Cincinnati Bearcats minus seven and a half. And moving on to the west side as the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors take on the Boise State Broncos up there on the blue turf. Uh, guys, Hawaii, uh, they do one thing really well. They throw the, they throw the ball, and uh, they probably prefer to throw it at home. What they don't do well is any sort of defense. Uh, they have struggled to stop the run, against, uh, especially against Power 5 schools, giving up 5.9 yards per carry in three games. Uh, the Broncos... Well, they have defended the pass very well this season, and that is going to spell trouble for a very one-dimensional Warriors offense. 
I like that Broncos offense. We still go back to the game where they played Marshall and gave up no first downs in the second half. And I think that Boise State offense, our defense, shows up again to take care of the Rainbow Warriors. Give me Boise State minus the surf, minus the 13 up there on the Smurf turf. And taking a look at the marquee matchup here today, one of three marquee matchups, actually. Uh, this one from the SEC as the Florida Gators travel down to Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Go Tigers. Uh, Florida is a 13.5 point road dog in this one. Hey, kids. We faded LSU last week, and it went so well, we're going to try it again. What could possibly go wrong? Um, however, before you laugh too hard, there might be a wee bit of difference between the Gator defense and the Utah State defense of last week. Uh, this is going to be the first real defense, actually, that uh, quarterback Joe Burrow and the Tiger, Tiger offense will face after basically playing five games against the Warm Butter Brigade. Uh, Florida... Well, they, have, uh, they are a turn turnover machine. They have taken the ball away at least three times in their last four games. LSU, well, they've lived by the home run ball this season, and I don't think the Gators are going to give up many big hits. Uh, the Tigers are the real deal, and Burroughs is just fine. Uh, they, may get together with the, they may get together with one deep ball. They have some serious talent uh, at the wide receiver position, but basically... Uh, for the most part, Joe Burrow is going to have to be patient and take the underneath stuff, and I'm really not convinced he can do that. Uh, for the, on the other side of the ball, the Gators are going to have to uh, be able to protect quarterback Kyle Trask, um, and Trask, he's going to have to do his part and stop turning the damn ball over. Um, I think uh, Florida's going to have enough. I'm not sure they have enough to beat them, but I think they have enough to beat the number right here in this one. And you know what? You want to take a sprinkle on Florida the money line plus 420? Be my guess. I wouldn't hate you a bit for that play. 420? 420? Ha <laughs> ha! How could you resist? Now, I know a lot of you Tigers fans are out there going, 420, yeah, you'd have to be high to back the Gators. But I think they're. Uh, I think the Gators, chomp, chomp, going to have a little something for them in, in the swamp. So we'll see. Uh, get yourself down on the Florida Gators, plus that 13 and a half. And uh, on the other side, take the Boise State Broncos, lay that 13 points. And while you're at it, lay Cincinnati's minus the seven and a half, Central Michigan minus ten, Duke minus seventeen, chalk, 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 chalky, and Kent State Golden Flashes minus the fourteen points. At the end of the day, you guys can join me. We'll pick up our chalkboards, we'll pick up our winning tickets, and we will head back to the window. All right, guys, let's take a look real quick at our premium record. If you, by the way. If you're interested in get down on the premium picks before the football season's over, got some deals there for you. Make sure you stop by, follow that link. We'll be able to hook you up. We're 10 and 11 on October. Baseball has been kicking our ass. That's right, I blame baseball because you see our football record right there. We are currently 42, 28, and 1. That is an even 60% on our premium football picks. So if you'd like more information, like to get signed up, follow that link right there, and we'll be happy to take care of you. Love to have you on the team. All right, so let's take a look at you guys. See how you guys did today. We've already found out that I suck. <clears throat> so let's uh, find out if you guys did any better at all. First of all, Ken P said, yum, he loves me a Cubano sandwich. Yep, I mentioned the Cubanos last week down there in my, or last night over in Miami. And now I've been thinking about them all day long. Uh, just like Ken P loving the Cubanos. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorites today, and he, and he was the first one to comment. Uh, Jake Bobby 305 Let's Go Canes. That's his name. Uh, surprisingly, uh, he took Virginia. No, he didn't take Virginia. He took Miami, and he took the over. So he uh, he got his he got, he got his uh, he got Miami in there, but he uh, did not get the over. He got uh, juiced. But uh, I'm sure Jake Bobby cares a lot more about the uh, about the Canes winning than he did about it going over. So congratulations, Jake Bobby. Uh, that totally uh, unbiased, objective look at the game paid off for you, and uh, Miami took care of business. Uh, Steve Godin. Uh, Steve had a couple plays from the uh, Oregon game, and uh, and uh, one, uh, yeah, he had the overall, he had the over for the whole game. He goes two and one plus ninety. Uh, Daniel Ruan. It is NBA day for Daniel. He goes two and one plus ninety. Uh, C Dub. C Dub. Uh, Peaks and valleys, my friend. Uh, C Dub. He, uh, he, he played some European soccer. C-Dub, uh, he also ate the Cubano today. <laughs> I ate the big Cubano on my picks. Um, C-Dub, he was right there with me. Uh, 
Uh, YC Mickup, he took uh, one play, took a tennis play, Dominic Thiem, did not work out well. YC, he also ate the Cubano. Um, Jen, uh, uh, Gene, Gene Hall, Inc., Gene Hall Incorporated, Gene Hall Inc., all right? Said a Miami fan here, said, you're being generous. I say Virginia wins by 14. Uh, you know, Gene, I kind of thought the same thing, obviously, but uh, that was not the case. Your canes looked very good, my friend. Uh, I'm, you got to eat the Cubano as well, but it was a delicious victory, Cubano. So congratulations right there. Uh, carrot, stop by with a little carrot philosophy, a little carrotosophy, if you will. He said, uh, for anyone feeling bad about a shit run, I started the morning 3-11 and 1. I kid you not, lost five tiebreakers for the match. Three of four tiebreakers for the set. Uh, granted, I got uh, 5,000 more plays, but goddamn, think in terms of flipping a coin. Uh, it does not lend on heads eight or nine times in a row for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ninja13, uh, he got uh, he got juice today. Uh, Super Cisco. Super Cisco had some plays uh, from the uh, from the baseball, and uh, that did not work out well. Did hit the Virginia-Miami under, but Super Cisco, he ate that Cubano. Uh, the Astute Aardvark said, congratulations, C-Dub, nice day. And then... Uh, the astute aardvark went out there and took a couple plays that I liked, and uh, he ate the Cubano. He had Virginia and Colorado as well. Um, he said, this, uh, "Aardvark, I love you, dude." Because I love you. I love the hook on that Colorado. He got twenty-one and a half. Uh, we needed the hook of twenty-one. We needed the three touchdown hook. <laughs> Yikes! Um, yeah. Oh, so you. So it's your fault. Your fault too. He said, "I, I agree that Herbert Sherbert is not dishing quite as fast as last year." So then Herbert just went out and proved us wrong, you <laughs> bastard. Oh, uh, he hopes you enjoyed your Cubano hard bark. Uh, Robert McCary said, Rob Mack, guaranteed coin. Uh, he had uh, he had a couple of the soccer plays, and he did have the Cardinals as well. Uh, he ate the Cubano on that one, but he does have a play for tomorrow. It's his play of the month. It says the Chiefs, buy the points. Buy it down to three, minus 170. Lay in the farm. And he's throwing in the goats. So there you go, my friends. Uh, Robert giving you a little a little heads up for tomorrow on that Chiefs game. Uh, minus the three points. Uh, Wayne B. Uh, he said Virginia on the money line. Forget taking the points. Yep, it really didn't matter either way. Uh, Wayne, just like the rest of us, he ate that Cubano. Uh, Derek Saunders said he's not really going to live on anything. He's not loving anything today. Uh, just trailing the uh, Just tailing the deep three and taking a hockey play. Uh, Derek, enjoy your Cubano, my friend. Uh, Joe A. Joe A. made one play today, and he said it was a lock. Said Colorado State minus 190 on the money line. He was absolutely correct. Joe A. goes 1-0 plus 100. So, uh, with that being said, let's see our uh, Paza Cappers for today. It is Steve Godon, 2-1 plus 90. Daniel Ruan, 2-1 plus 90. And friends... It is the uh, it is the day for the one with the, the man with one shoe to rule the barefoot kingdom, kids. Joe A one and O plus one hundred. I shit you not, Joe A. You are our capper of the day. Congratulations, my friend. You beat you beat the regulars. We were all eating cubanos, and you're sneaking in there with the victory. So, Joe, uh, if you if you're listening and you want to comment, let us know what your favorite play for NFL Sunday is. Put it in the comment section for this video, and we'll make sure we get it on the pick sheet for Sunday, all right? To the rest of you guys, what the hell? We all got to pick up the pace here, all right? Uh, we got that out of our system. We got that shitty Friday done. Let's uh, let's brush it off, shake it off, and go out there and kick some ass today, all right? Whatever happens, we'll meet back here at the same time. We'll bitch about our, ba we'll bitch about our bad beats, brag about our fat stacks, and, because it's going to be Sunday... We'll fire it up, we'll get the DGen specials rolling, and we'll do it all again, all right? You guys take care. Good luck on everything today. Let's go make some goddamn money, all right? And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.